Entertaining friends and family at home can be a little easier if you expand your living space to the outdoors. Gwen Lloyd of the Naperville Garden Club has a few tips for how to do so. Hi Lisa, thanks for visiting me during one of my favorite times of year. Summer's here, it's the time most Chicagoland residents are looking forward to so that they can get out of their home and get out into the green space. After I've been inside all winter long, what I like to do is visually open up my living space to the out of doors. And one of the ways that I do that is incorporating one of my big windows that seems to be like a big picture frame for what's going on outside. If you notice, I don't have any window treatments up. I wanna keep it open. Open concept as far as decorating is the latest buzzword that's out there. No walls, no visual barriers, just this big space, which is wonderful, but you can also tend to get lost in that. So you need to know the skill of being able to condense a big open space into small living areas. And that's what we're gonna be discussing today. One of the first things I do as far as decorating is to look as my garden fills in and I try to coordinate my inside with my outside decorating. I'm looking to coordinate colors, change my pillows out, go more green. I bring in a runner on a table that also shows those colors. Now that we're outside, let's talk about how this space has come together. We're going to use the same decorating ideas outside as we use inside, and that's the concept of layers. Everything starts from the bottom and works its way up. So this outside living space starts with the flooring. We've used brick and slate, and this shape that we've used, you can either go rectangular or circular, so this is basically a circular shape, and therefore the furniture that I use for my next layer is going to incorporate that shape. So I've decided to use a round table here with the chairs that go with it. So you have your flooring, you go hardscape now is your furniture, and then we bring in softscape, which is your fabrics and different textures to help with your decorating scheme. I would strongly suggest that you go neutrals when you're using outdoor furniture fabrics. Uh, they're gonna last a long time, and so you wanna get the most mileage you can out of that investment, so go neutral as far as color and design. The uh, fabrics that I've used here, I have a neutral color, and it's a very small textured pattern. So I'm gonna get a lot of years out of this when it's, as I coordinate it, and then I add my decorative accessories. So I've taken a lantern so that in the evening time I can turn on the candle that's with it and it gives me a little bit more ambiance. We've been talking an awful lot about the view from the house looking outside into the garden, but there's another part of this whole decorating scheme that you really should be careful of. What does the concept look like for the people who are sitting with their backs to the garden and are turned around and facing your home? So if you look here, the outside of my home is siding and it could be very boring and very plain. And what what I've opted to do is to give this some visual interest. So again, I've used decorative accessories to do that. And most importantly, I haven't actually mounted them on the wall because you're not gonna wanna be putting holes into your siding. So all of these accessories stand on the actual ground. Fountains are wonderful. They help hide ambient noise that's coming through that you don't want to have. If you live on a busy street as I do, there could be traffic going by and it helps just kind of hide that. Keep in mind that when you have your outdoor living space here in the summertime, the whole concept is to make you want to transition from your inside to the outside. It increases your living space, you want to make it more comfortable, and this is one more small living area within the open concept of your home. So now we've moved over to our second living space that's closest to the home. This is a permanently covered outdoor porch, and as such, it doesn't get hit with the sun and the wetness from rain. So now I can bring in some other accessories. This is where I'm gonna start with my indoor-outdoor carpet because it won't get wet and it'll last many more years than if it was out in an uncovered spot. So if you notice the way this coordinates with the other space, I have the same piece of furniture, so the furniture set coordinates, as well as my textures with my fabrics. So I have the same cushions that coordinate color-wise that pull over. My decorative accessory also coordinates the two spaces. I've got my lanterns here, which coordinates with the main lantern that's over in the eating area on the other side. Let's also talk about the big wall that's standing here right in front of all of us. 
stone is much more attractive than the siding for the house, but I still want to visually bring my eye up and I want to do something a little bit more decorative in front of this stone wall. So what I've chosen to do here is to bring in a freestanding arbor. Again, it's not something that is permanently attached to this building, but it stands on its own, brings in a different color, brings in a different texture because it's metal and stands on its own. Let's also talk about the permanent botanicals that are out here. So I've chosen to use other colors here because my focus is all here within this nice contained space and I find that it's not fighting so much with the colors of the flowers that are blooming out in the garden. So here I just want a fun place with lots of color and surrounding myself with comfortable things that make me want to stay here for a while. So I hope I've given you some good ideas on how you can use your outdoor space. Back to you, Lisa. Thanks, Gwen. And for more information on the Naperville Garden Club, including dates for their upcoming workshops, visit their website.